and welcome to Shiloh Kids Online. I'm so thankful that you're here. Let's start our time out together in prayer. Lord, we bless your name. We thank you that your compassions and mercy are new every morning. We thank you for the opportunity that we have together today to learn more about you, to study your word, and to be drawn closer to you. We pray that you would help us to use our time wisely. Help us to love you more and to love like you love. In your name we pray. Amen. So today we're going to, um, Pastor Jeff, it's time for Shallow Kids Online. It's not snack time. And Pastor Jeff, what are you eating? Ice cream. Mmm. Ice cream. Hmm. Do any of you have a favorite ice cream flavor? Mine is Jamocha Almond Fudge. Hey, I know. Why don't you type your favorite ice cream flavor in the comments so that I can see? Have you ever been to the grocery store with someone in your family and you're standing there trying to figure out which flavor your family should buy? Well, you really want moose tracks, but your brother or your sister, they only like plain old vanilla. In that moment, you've got a choice to make. You could put up a big fuss and say, she always gets what she wants, or it's not fair, he always gets to pick. Or you could just say, okay, let's get vanilla. You could show some humility. Humility is putting others first by giving up what you think you deserve. Side note, you can always toss some chocolate syrup or chocolate chips or caramel sauce on that plain old vanilla and fix it up. That would be a pretty awesome Sunday. Then everyone's happy. I'm just saying. There are a lot of times in your life when we, when we have to decide if we're going to dig in and try to get our way or if we're going to let it go and do what's best for someone else. We can remember how Jesus showed humility because of the way he treated people. He pretty much turned the world upside down. <laughs> remember, upside down, like our set? I always enjoy worshiping God with you. Let's give God everything we've got as we sing to him because he is wonderful. Hey, Miss Rachel, will you come join me? Everyone, will you stand and let's sing together everything to God. Thank you. 
about God's amazing love? Oh, what a wonderful way to spend our time together. Hey, stay standing and let's sing Jesus Loves Me. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me, he who died. Heaven's gate to open wide He will wash away my sin And let me as his child come in Yes, Jesus loves me Yes, Jesus loves me Yes, Jesus loves me The Bible tells me so Jesus loves me, God's own son Risen Savior, Holy One Jesus loves me, won't let go He's with me anywhere I go Yes, Jesus loves me Yes, Jesus loves me Yes, Jesus loves me The Bible tells me so Jesus loves me here today Walking with me on the way Helping me his child to give to all who live. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. The Bible is the greatest book ever written. It's the greatest story ever told. So I'll invite you to our time together to practice as we're memorizing the books of the Bible in order. We'll start with the Old Testament. Will you read with me? Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. Okay, try it with me now with just the initials to the books. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. Fantastic. All right, let's take some time to do the New Testament. Read with me. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, 1st and 2nd Timothy, Titus, Philemon, Hebrews, James, 1st and 2nd Peter, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, Jude, Revelation. Now let's just, let's try it now with just the initials. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, 1st and 2nd Timothy, Titus, Philemon, Hebrews, James, 
1st and 2nd Peter, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, Jude, and Revelation. That was great. We'll take a moment now to watch the video of our Shiloh kids traveling. Later on in our lesson, we'll learn about two men that went on a seven mile walk. Take a look. Go! <laughs> For the month of April, during our time together, we've worked on memorizing the verse Philippians 2, 3. So now let's spend some time together continuing on that memorizing. Will you read this verse together with me? Don't do anything only to get ahead. Don't do it because you are proud. Instead, be humble. Value others more than yourselves. Philippians 2, 3. Now let's try it with just the initials to the words. Don't do anything only to get ahead. Don't do it because you are proud. Instead, be humble. Value others more than yourselves. Philippians 2, 3. How'd you do with that? Okay, so now one of the ways that we will work on studying Philippians 2, 3 and memorizing it is by using some pencils. Miss Rachel, Miss Hannah, if you ladies will come join me. There you go. I'll use yours. So while you're saying the verse, I want you to find a way to balance your pencil. Maybe you're balancing it on your head, maybe balancing it on your finger or two fingers or your wrist or your elbow. You get the idea. While you're balancing the pencil, pencil say the words to the verse okay i'll let you have that all right all right ready all right ladies don't do anything only to get ahead don't do any because you are proud instead be humble value others more than yourselves philippians 2 3 Great. So after you get that down pat in one pose, use your pencil and figure out something else. I don't know, like maybe balancing it on your knee or while you're balancing it, walk across the room and back. Have fun with that. We have so many reasons to thank God every day. When we sing and praise him, it's a great way for us to say thank you Thank you, Jesus, for who you are. Thank you for everything that you've done. So let's worship him together as we sing. Miss Rachel, will you join me? Everyone stand and let's sing, Your Love is Deep.
Because of Jesus, we can stand here today free and forgiven. Today, we're going to pick up right where we left off in God's big story. We're picking things up right after Easter when Jesus died on the cross and then came back to life. However, this Bible story will be a little bit different. It'll be interactive, which means I need your help to tell it. Not just one of you, not just two of you, but all of you. Okay, I'll be asking for some audience participation throughout the story. Sometimes it'll be in the form of these cue cards. I'll hold up so you'll know what you need to do as a prompt. Sometimes I'll have you stand to do some motions. Sometimes you'll make sound effects. You get the idea. So, all right, let's practice. Here's our first one. <laughs> great, great. What about this one? <gasps> Excellent. I couldn't be any prouder. All right, I have one more. Oh, okay. yeah. Oh, yeah. Boo hoo. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> great, great. Well, I um, am very sure that there were no. Fortnite dance parties back in Jesus' day, but I did want to see if you are all in with these cue cards, and you are. So let's begin. We pick up our story right after Mary had gone to get Peter and John and to bring them back to the empty tomb. Peter and John checked out the tomb, and all they found were the strips of cloth that Jesus was buried in. They had just seen their friend die. And now his body was nowhere to be found. Hmm. That same day, two of Jesus' followers were heading to a village called Emmaus. It was a long walk, uh, about seven miles from Jerusalem. So here's what I need you to do. Everybody get up on your feet and start your walking. That's it. That's it. Only six and three quarters more miles to go. What? Whew. 
Okay, okay. That was great. Have a seat. Let's continue. Ready for some sound effects? We don't know what these two men encountered as they walked along the road. Maybe there were a few animals, like donkeys. <coughs> or stray dogs. <laughs> Maybe there were even families with some crying babies. <coughs> I feel like I'm right there with them. On the way, the two men were talking about everything that had happened. How Jesus had died on the cross, the empty tomb, and maybe even the rumors that Jesus had come back to life. And what to make of it. What indeed. Mm. As they were walking and talking, a man started walking along with them at the same pace. He seemed just like a random guy who had joined up with them because he was walking in the same direction. That guy, oh yeah. That was Jesus, but God kept the men from recognizing him. Say what? 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 I don't know. What? What? Jesus asked them, well, what are you talking about as you walk along? The men's faces look sad. You make a sad face? Perfect. Totally sad. One of the two men who was named Cleopas, responded to Jesus this way. Remember, he didn't know it was Jesus at the time. Are you the only person visiting Jerusalem who doesn't know? Don't you know about the things that have happened there in the last few days? In other words, he was like, stranger, have you been hiding under a rock this whole time? Jesus asked, what things? about Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet. He was powerful in what he said and did in the sight of God and all the people. The men went on and they told about, they told Jesus all about well, Jesus. They explained how the chief priests and rulers had made up lies and gotten Jesus sentenced to death and how Jesus had been nailed to a cross. They told Jesus the story of everything he had done. Everyone stand up. Try these moves with me. The men said, we had hoped, clap your hands together, that Jesus was going to set us free. Break your hands apart. But the third day, show me three fingers, since this had all happened, a few of our friends were amazed, show me surprise face, <gasps> us too. They went to Jesus' tomb early in the morning and found that it was empty. Looking inside, act shocked. <gasps> like the most shocked you've ever been. <gasps> Good job, okay, you can have a seat. Then Jesus spoke and he said, how foolish you are. How long it takes you to believe all the prophets said. Didn't the Messiah have to suffer these things and then receive his glory? Jesus went on to remind them of all the scriptures that laid out God's master plan. How ever since the beginning, God had planned to send a savior. He went all the way back to Moses and the prophets. This probably took a while, but remember, they were on the road to Emmaus, which was a seven mile journey. Who knows? Jesus may have talked for like five of those miles, he talked about all of the scriptures that have predicted his birth, his life, and his death. As they neared Emmaus, Jesus kept on walking and talking as if he was going further down the path. The two guys were totally amazed at this man who they still didn't recognize as Jesus. And they wanted him to stay a bit longer. They tried to keep him from leaving. They asked him to stay with them since it was getting late. Jesus agreed to stay with the men. They sat down together for an evening meal. Jesus took the bread, gave thanks, and broke it. And he started to give it to them. And immediately, the men realized that he was Jesus. But then, in an instant, Jesus disappeared from their sight. Poof. Now, there's...
there probably wasn't a poof sound, but I imagine that the men were like, wait, 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 what just happened? They, they realized it was Jesus who had been with them all along, and no wonder he was able to explain those promises from Scripture. They got up at once and started on their journey back to Jerusalem. All right, time to walk back. Come on, everyone up. This time you're walking in the opposite direction than you first did, because now we're heading back. Seven more miles to go. Uh -huh. Okay, okay. They had to go and tell the other disciples. Nice job, everyone. Think about how excited that these two guys must have been. They just sat down at a meal after a seven-mile journey, but once they figured out that Jesus himself had been with them, they got up and went all the way back to Jerusalem, and there they found the 11 disciples and started telling them everything that had just happened. I cannot believe that that was actually Jesus. Like, can you imagine? It was Jesus. And we, what are we going to eat for dinner? That's what it sounded like. Everyone talking at the same time. People talking over one another. A confused mess of a story. But then the men got everyone's attention. They told the rest of the disciples how Jesus had walk, walked alongside of them. How he had explained the scriptures. And how they finally realized it was him when he started to pass out the bread. It was all true. Jesus was alive. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. 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 Nice job. Yes, that's right. The disciples were starting to get a better idea of just how big God's plan really was. It was bigger and stretched longer and farther through history than any of them could possibly imagine. Remember this, everyone. There's always more to discover from God's plan. The disciples thought that they had seen the end of the story when Jesus died on the cross, but God's plan was so much bigger that what, than even what they could imagine. We can't always see the full story of our own lives, but we can trust that God knows. As we learn more about him, We'll learn to trust him more and more. Another amazing story. I can't even imagine what it was like for those two guys to suddenly realize that it was Jesus walking with them the whole time. And then to see him vanish right before their eyes, that would have sure shaken me up. But those men could see there was so much more to God's plan than they ever thought possible. Sometimes humility means that you admit you don't have all the answers. It's a tough thing to admit that sometimes, but it helps us realize that we have a lot to learn about God. And that's okay. Jesus helped these men fill in the blanks and connect the dots about God's plan he showed them that through the scriptures that he really is God's son, the savior of the world. Just like those men, you are never, ever done learning. So we're going to step outside and take a look at this week's craft that goes along with our lesson. So use your sidewalk chalk and make a path to follow. While you're drawing your path and following it, think about the story that we learned today. After you've finished drawing your path, or while you're doing it, make sure to have someone take a picture to send it to Pastor Jeff. We want to see your creative work. So Miss Hannah is going to tell us the path that she's drawn out. All right. So what you're going to do is you're going to start on the hopscotch. Then you're gonna walk on the pink balance beam, put your feet in each of the circles, go around the triangles, and end on the X. Okay. On your mark, get set, go. Oh, 